<laughs> Future doctor speaking. Anybody I, else I, have I, I fun this morning? Nothing? Nobody else had fun. Nobody else learned anything. Iris is smiling. She must have learned something. She wants to keep it a secret. It's fine. It's fine. Don't tell us. Don't share. I'm Dr. T. Um, I'm uh, a microbiologist. And what that means is I study um, really tiny things that you usually can't see unless you have a microscope. Really, really small things. But um, if you get them in like the trillions, you can see them. So they're so tiny that by themselves, individually, you'd never be able to see them. But um, we can grow, we can grow them up. And when we grow them, has anybody seen like a Petri dish before? Maybe in school or on TV. So these are just like plastic plates and they have a top and a bottom and inside of it, it it's like almost like jello. And inside of the jello, it's food for the bacteria that we want to grow, bacteria and fungi and stuff like that. So um, uh, what I did was I went hiking, um, this is a while back, and I got some sand in my shoe and I took the sand and I put it on this plate and stuff grew. So each one of those spots is a different kind of bacterium or fung fungus, and they grew to like trillions, trillions. Oh my goodness, trillions. And you see like there's different colors and maybe you can see they're like a little bit different shape kind of thing. Some are fuzzy, some are not fuzzy. If we didn't have to be in Zoom, I'd let you like, oh, I, you can't touch them, but you could like really look at a good look at them. They're pretty cool. So all kinds of different things. Um, uh, little microbes are growing on this plate. So we're going to today, so these things luckily, because um, there are microbes, most of the ones that you hear about uh, are like scary ones like um, SARS-CoV-2 that causes COVID, right? That's pretty scary. Um, or like influenza that causes flu. We're going to talk about those things. That's what people always obsess about. They're always thinking about the bad things. But we also know that microbes are really can be really good too. How many people ate bread this morning? Anybody? Bread? Bread? Anybody have yogurt? Anybody had yogurt ever before? I have eaten yogurt. Yogurt's kind of funky. I know. I know. Yogurt yeah. actually has a, um, a kind of bacteria that make milk turn into yogurt. And the bread that you ate, was it like fluffy or was it like flat bread? Um, I usually eat in flatbread. I didn't eat any this morning, though. Yeah, you didn't eat any. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. Next time you eat a fluffy piece of bread, think about, you'll think about this session because we're going to talk about yeast today. And so if you can find your kit, the kit that you got from the other day, so find your microbes, friends, and foes um, kit, and you should be able to see, yeah, go find your kit box. Look it. inside of there. And there should be a tube. That kind of looks like this. This is actually my assembled one. And inside, do you see something on the inside of that? Sand. Sand, it looks like sand. Lots of people say it's sand, it's not. It's not, you know what, what? That stuff is actually living. Don't kill it, do not kill it. Willis is gonna talk to you about, <laughs> cause like there's living things in my box. Oh yeah, there's living things in your box. That sand like stuff is actually yeast. And Willis is going to tell you guys about how we're going to do an experiment with that stuff. Yeah, hi, everybody. So like Dr. T said, all these little, it looks like little balls in there, or sand, as you guys <laughs> said, um, they're all alive. They're called yeast. And they're what like make our breads and doughs and stuff make, you know, they, they rise. So what we're going to do with these is I'm going to, I'm going to take off the lid. <laughs> Sorry. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some sugar to it. Now, you guys, you have two tubes, so you can do two different experiments if you want. Um, mine's just going to have sugar, but you could do a sugar one if you want, or and you can do a different one. So some other good options you can do are like juices. So like apple juice works really well, or like uh, soda. Um, you just got to make sure that the soda doesn't have or is flat so it doesn't already have bubbles in it because the same the yeast will make the same type of bubbles, the carbon dioxide bubbles. You, guys you also want to make sure. Sorry, you don't have to do it right now. You just uh, this is just a demo so you can do it later. So you can yeah, read just, the destructions. You'll be like, oh yeah, that's what Willis did. 
this is what you're I'm doing. just showing you guys how to do it. So then you're going to want to take um, whatever liquid you're using, if it's water or a soda, and you're going to want to make sure that it's warm. <clears throat> so, and then you're going to fill it up to uh, the number 10. So that would be 10 milliliters. So it's all the way up to let's see the number 10 right there. And since I have my yeast and my sugar in there, it's going to be a little bit higher than that. <clears throat> and the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put your lid back on and you're going to want to kind of shake it up, mix it all together, kind of invert it, which means break it up a little bit. So as you can see, a lot of the yeast is kind of sticking to the, the bottom of the tube. Just going to kind of want to shake it and try to break everything up. I like to flick it. It seems to work the best. Does it look like sand anymore? Like, what's your thing look like? Um, it's still kind of chunky in there because you can yeah, see everything kind chunky. of floating around. Yeah, but it's but is it getting less chunky? Cool. It is getting less chunky. Yes. Cool. So then you're gonna want after you get it all mixed up together, you're gonna take your lid back off and be very careful so you don't spill it everywhere. And then you're gonna want to take one of your balloons. And you might need to get someone's help to get this on because it's a little tricky. And you're just going to want to take the balloon and get it right over the top of the lid <clears throat> or over top of it. So it just sits like that. And then as, and you're going to want to sit it in a nice warm spot because the yeast like um, to be warm. If it's too cold, they won't, they won't eat the sugars and they won't start um, producing the, the, the gas. So your balloon won't really do anything for a while. So the warmer it is, the faster the reaction will really be. That's I have cool. another one that we started at our last uh, breakout session. So you can see the difference in the balloon. It's a little bit poofier than this one, which is just kind of hanging here. And so that's about uh, a 30 minute difference between the two. Nice. So I've got one from this morning. And if you look at it, and there we go. If you look at it, there's like this foamy stuff at the top, the foamy bubbles. So that's the, that's the gas that the, the yeast is making. So inside of your bread, the yeast is eating the sugar that you added to the bread and it's making these little pockets, these little air pockets. And that's what makes your bread like fluffier, taller than like a flat bread. So you can do that. And look, my balloon, my balloon's like real puffy. Ooh, it's getting really pretty good. So um, you guys all got two of these sets. So two of them. So you can do two experiments and try different things. So we also gave you two kinds of sugars. So, you know, people uh, eat um, like Diet Coke di or drink Diet Coke and diet uh, drinks um, because they have sugars that we humans can't really use and they um, can't metabolize very well, can't you eat up very well. And, um, but yeast can eat it and then they will make bubbles and stuff like that. So you can try the experiment. You can see, do your yeast like to eat sugar, um, like regular sugar? You can get some sugar from your cabinet maybe, or you can try the, the sugars in the um, packet. And then, or you could try like apple juice. Who had apple juice this morning? Any of apple juice? No? Who had soda? Good, no. Oh, you did, okay. Make sure it's flat, because that already makes bubbles, right? If that does already have bubbles, then it's gonna mess up your experiment. Make sure it's a little warm, because like you, they don't like to do stuff when it's cold. That the yeast won't do stuff. I know, right? It's too cold outside today. Yeah. So make sure it's warm enough for them, but not like super burning hot. So thanks so much, Willis, for that demo. Um, and then, so that's what you can do later. You can do that later. And in the meantime, we are going to do this experiment. So if you can find your cardboard cutout of your virus. I have a question. Sure. Do animals like the yeast? Because my dog is trying to eat the tube. Yeah, maybe. It might smell like, well, to be honest, like most dogs I know will eat pretty much anything. Yeah, especially puppies. Yeah, right, right. Um, so the yeast probably smells a little like bread. And so the, the dog's like, ooh, that smells like something I could eat. So probably don't let your dog close to that tube. <laughs> That's a good question, though. It won't hurt him if he eats it. It's just yeast. It's literally the yeast that's in bread. Okay, so what we're going to do, um, I've forgotten who's running this uh, part of it. Mahmoud, okay. So Mahmoud's gonna help us um, make 
make this floppy thing into a the most common virus shape. So take it away. Hey guys, so I'm gonna show you guys how to what a virus kind of looks like as a replica. And you guys are helping me build it. So what you need is your replica and also some tape with you. So make sure you have some tape, otherwise this is gonna be real tricky. <laughs> Ready? Okay. So the first step you guys are gonna to do to build the virus is you're gonna look for the numbers two and 19. So here's number 19 and here's number two. And you're kind of gonna fold it and bring those two numbers together. So here's number 19 and here's number two. And once you do that, you're just gonna tape them together. So I always mess this up. I always wanna make, you wanna make sure that they're, they're lined up really nicely, which seems weird because they kind of fold over like this or like this, but you wanna get the two and the 19, like really lined up the bottom of those triangles, bottom of those triangles. Yeah, like mom has got it perfectly. Nice. All right. So after this step, it should be really easy. So when you go to the top, you just uh, start taping triangle pairs together. So for example, if you want to go to the odd numbers, you can look for number one and number five on the top and just uh, bring them together and just tape it together. Perfect. That looks good. And so all you're going to do is you're just going to keep repeating that stuff on both sides of the icosahedral. It's called. So who likes math here? So do you see any pattern in those um, those numbers that are pointing at the top? So let's find one, number one, and then goes number five. What's next to the number five? You can hold up numbers. Nine, and then you just go around 13 and 17. Can anybody find the pattern there? What's the pattern there? Looks like we're super busy taping, taping like fiends. I like it. Little arts and crafts. I have to be honest, that's kind of why I like doing science. It's kind of arts and craftsy. I get to do stuff with my hands all the time when I do experiments. It's way more fun for me to do that than to like write something or There's something, something with just numbers and computers. Nice. So Noah, do you have all five of those, uh, those together? Just keep taping and taping and taping and taping until you're done. Mom one's gonna show you. Keep going, gotta keep going. I know, sometimes it helps if somebody holds it for you. Mariska is back. Ah, the beauty of Zoom. The drama of Zoom. Trying to get everybody together. Don't worry, you can do this all by yourself later too. So in, in you should have gotten two pastes, two handouts, and the handouts give you all the directions in there too. Nice. Yeah. That's exactly right. On the last page of the handout, there's a picture of another one of these sh shapes, these cutouts. 
you if you really if you were curious you could take that and you can cut that out so here's the last page of the cut so you like see that so here's a paper version if you cut all of this this thing out so it's one long thing just like this one you can make another virus shape the icosahedron so Mahmoud, what's what that's a really fancy word what does icosahedron mean um I'm pretty sure it means just like uh, it's the name of the 20 sided triangle. Like, yep, 20 sided shape. Does anybody um, play Dungeons and Dragons or Magic the Gathering Dungeons and Dragons version now? Do you ever see like weird shaped dice? So, usually your dice have six sides. Um, there's some weird dice that have different shapes, and there's one shape, it almost looks like a circle because it's like this. Imagine this as a smaller thing, but that could be di a die that you could throw. And then it lands. You can actually use this. You can play games with it. Roll it. It has 20 triangles. Triangles, the strongest engineering shape. I know that's cool, right? Yes. So, you know, you can take your time taping it. I know it's real tricky, but. Um, on the outside, you could do some interesting things too. Hmm. Yeah, it is a lot of sides. 20 sides is a lot, but it's super strong, which is really important. It's very important for the virus. Why is it important for the virus? Inside of this shell is the most important thing for the virus. What's inside the what's inside of this? Ria's gonna tell me all about it. What's inside of this shell? What does the virus want to protect? There is a nucleus inside of it. It's a, yeah, nucleic acids inside of there. And it's, <clears throat> it's going to be protected. And it's the most yeah. important thing for the virus. Because if you don't have that stuff protected and it gets damaged, then you can't make more of yourself. And then you kind of yeah. die. <laughs> yeah. So very, very good. And then, um, so this is actually the shape for um, like SARS-CoV-2. Everybody knows about this, unfortunately. We all talk about this all the time. SARS-CoV-2 looks like this, except this would be a naked one, a naked one. Instead, and actually the handout has a, the picture on the front. This picture has a lot of these little things on the outside. This is actually a picture of SARS-CoV-2, the virus. It actually has little things that we call spike. So you might have also heard of this name too, uh, coronavirus. It's a kind of coronavirus because all these little spikes on the outside kind of make it look like a crown. Corona in Italian or uh, Latin means um, crown. So it's a crown virus. So you can tell your friends whenever you hear coronavirus, it's a crown virus because of all these little spiky things. And so you can imagine that each of these spiky things actually is like a key. This little key tries to find a lock. And if it finds the right lock, like on your cells, it can open its way into your cell. So this spike protein, um, that key finds the lock. The lock is uh, like ACE, a, a protein called ACE2. And then if it gets into the right cell, it can get in there and, and uh, grow. And that's a problem. So how's, how's everybody's activity going? Anybody? Yes, good. So you could, do the, you could do something interesting. You could protect something inside of this nice pretty shell. You could put something valuable in there, like your RNA or your DNA or your money, something. I don't know, whatever you want to put inside. You could also decorate the outside. You could decorate the outside like the SARS-CoV-2 does. Nice, good iris, very good, very cool. So most, um, most viruses have this shape. It's a very smart shape, once again, very good engineering shape, but some of them don't, some of them don't. I'm gonna call on Aiden again. Yeah, hi guys, I'm Aiden. Um, so I work in a lab that studies two viruses. We study SARS, which has that kind of classical icosahedral shape. And the other virus we study is called Ebola. You guys might have heard about that, or you might not have. Um, but Ebola is a little bit oddly shaped for a virus. So whereas a lot of viruses have that nice almost sphere of the icosahedral, Ebola looks more like a spaghetti noodle or a piece of string. 
right? So it's kind of long and, and thin like that, but it can also fold in on itself. It can form these kind of loops and different structures like that, um, which is very unique among viruses. So it's kind of fun to look at pictures of Ebola because you can see it like almost looking like a, like a piece of spaghetti that you ate for dinner or something. What is, what does that do? Like that? Yeah. And unfortunately, Ebola is one of the nastier viruses out there. It causes this really bad disease called hemorrhagic fever, which basically makes you super, super sick in a really bad way. Um, but lucky for us, it's really hard to get Ebola. Um, not a lot of people have it. it doesn't transmit between people very well so you're pretty safe and that's why we do research on it so we can help protect people from it in the future we try to develop drugs try to understand it better so we can protect people from it very cool and i have forgotten to introduce my friends here so we're going to just take a moment to introduce everybody so aiden introduced himself you're done <laughs> um ria you want to say hi yeah hi i'm ria i'm a second year microbiology major I'm not in any labs yet, but I do really enjoy microbiology. And so we're working on it, but I'm starting my introductory courses this year. Awesome. What, why, do you, why do you like microbes? Why did you decide to care about microbes? Because there is so much in this world that, you, that has to do with microbiology and you can, it always relates back to it. And there's so much in the medical field, which is what I wanna go into. And there's so much that you can learn from microbiology and you can apply it to real life. Awesome. Mahmoud, I think you have a very similar feelings, strong feelings. Yeah, so I'm also a, th I'm a third year microbiology undergrad and I'm also pre-medicine. So I'm also interested in how viruses and other microbes hurt us and how we can treat them. Eileen? This is my, uh, I'm Eileen, and this is my fourth year, so I'm a senior studying microbiology and French, and I work in a lab where we don't study specifically a virus or specifically a bacteria. Instead, we use these viruses, that little capsid, that what we basically made today, and we put it, fill it with stuff that we want to see happen, and so we use this to enter your cells and change your DNA to fix some genetic diseases um, called cystic fibrosis. Um, so that's how we use some microbiology. Um, it's a little bit different than a clinical or disease causing way, but it's very still microbiology. Yeah, that's really good point is that you can actually use them as tools too. And we have used them as tools to manipulate and make things better for medicine, but by using this as a tool to help us get back um, DNA into, into our own human cells. Very cool. Willis. Hi guys. Um, so my name is Willis and I am a third year undergraduate at the university. Um, so I'm a junior um, and I, I work in um, one of the labs and the lab that I work on or in, we do a research on influenza, so the flu. How many people had a flu shot? You are trying to protect yourself from the stuff that Willis works on. Good, good. Awesome. Does anybody have any questions? How, are, how do your virus shapes look? Looking any better? Are they done? Nice. Mariska, nice. Nice. Yeah, you could tape it up. I mean, Eileen's real crafty. She probably would put stuff, really fun things on the outside. You could make, yeah, and then, oh, look at that. Sammy's got his experiment going. Yeah, look at my balloon. Do you remember what it looked like before? Now it's looking a lot bigger. It's just been sitting here since we were talking. And at the beginning of this whole thing, it looked like this, it was all floppy, like nothing. And now it's all blown up. Isn't that cool? And you can even see the bubbles. The foaminess is actually, <laughs> it's actually in the balloon now. It's going all the way up, all the way up. Oh yeah, look at that. Willis has got two balloons right there. You all got really big balloons, so it's gonna take longer to fill it up. I think you have the same size balloons as Willis has got. So it's gonna take a little while and you can see, you can see which one's like looks better than the other. Who knows? Yeah. 
Why is there a string in our bag? The string is, oh, that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. So the string is actually, you, you can do two, one of two things. You can either pretend this is DNA and RNA or RNA, and you could put it inside of your, um, your icosahedron because that's what you would want to protect. That could be your, your, um, that thing inside of the shell. Or you could use the string to measure your balloons. So if you take this string around your balloon, the fattest part of your balloon, so I'm going to do it right now. This is a very short string, it's a small balloon. And then I bring the ends together where it touches. I'm gonna to put my finger right there and then I let go. And then this is how big, how, how big the balloon is around. So the circumference of that, that balloon. And what I would do is take that and measure it with a ruler and then I could know how big that balloon is. And that'll help me to compare from one, one experiment to the other. So if Willis were to do this, the one that was longer, that had been sitting longer, that balloon is bigger, but he could actually know how much bigger. And in science, we really like to have numbers to compare, not just, oh, that looks bigger and that looks smaller. We'd actually want to know, oh, this is two times bigger, this is four times bigger, that kind of thing. So that's what this, the string is for. That was a great question. Does anybody else have any questions? How many, um, how many bacteria do you think you are on you or in you? Probably a lot. Probably a lot is a very good answer. That is true. A million? More than a million. Five billion? Billion is getting close to the, the mark. Uh, 10 billion. Lots. Lots. In your, so if you counted up all the cells in your body, so you guys did a lot of experiments today and lot, saw a lot of really cool things. Like who saw the um, inside of the body? Somebody saw the inside of the body, human body. So all of those, so all of like your bones, um, your, your, um, your like heart, some, did somebody do heart or is that a different session? Your heart, they all have different little tiny things um, called cells and they make up different parts of your body that make you a human. Well, the, um, you also have bacteria that are even smaller that are in or on your body. And if you counted up all the cells that were your, your body, like all the human cells that make your heart and your lungs and all of those things, you would actually have 10 times more microbes than human cells. So you're 10 times more microbe or bacteria than you are human. You're just a giant uh, like bag of bacteria walking around, just holding the bacteria. And the cool thing is the bacteria that are in you are probably not gonna, are, are not making you sick because you probably, probably feel pretty good. The bacteria aren't hurting you and they actually kind of help you. So they, they can do amazing things. Like we have, bac we have bacteria that can grow at temperatures that hu no human could ever grow in. We have temperature, we have bacteria that grow in temperatures that no human could go, like cold, so cold or so um, sunny. There are actually bacteria that can grow um, in uh, the same amount of radiation as a, 10 atomic bombs. Like they are really amazing at growing. So bacteria can do really cool things. And the ones in your, in your gut, in your intestines, those actually can take things that you eat and make really cool things. Um, that your body needs that we can't make with our human cells, but the bacteria actually can make it. So once you've got your balloon like this, try not to turn it upside down and back and forth because sometimes that'll make, it might spill. So if you can keep it in a cup like this, like that, and just let it sit there for like the day and just every now and then take your string out and you don't have to cut it. You just take the string out and you wrap it around and measure with that. It looks like we're about to leave, but thanks everybody for coming and thanks for all the helpers for helping with today's session. I just wanted to say hello, um, thank you one more time. I will see you later. Bye. Bye, thanks.